Hi, my name is Jamie Thompson and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrates the capabilities of Cozy Rock Software's suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. The demonstrations herein were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2008, however the Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for both SQL Server Integration Services 2005 and 2008 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Cozy Rock's template task. This is a, a task which essentially wraps around an open source project called the Apache Velocity Project. What the Apache Velocity Project does is provide or it's essentially a scripting language that allows you to take data from an arbitrary data source and convert it into some different kind of data source such as a CSV file, an XML file or even HTML. Now the demonstration that we're going to show today actually shows us taking data from an SSIS data flow converting that into a CSV file and also an HTML file as well. First thing we need to do as always is install the template task into our toolbox. The way we do that is we go to choose items in our toolbox we go to SSIS control flow items and we scroll down until we find template task. There it is and it's been installed into our toolbox for us. We have a package here that I prepared earlier. Uh, the reason I did that is because it would take quite a while to put this together step by step. So put it together earlier and I'm going to show you around it now. We've got three tasks, a data flow task and two instances of our Cozy Rock template task. I'll take you into the data flow task first. Now there's nothing particularly unusual in here. It's all standard out of the box SSIS components we have a script component that is preparing some data for us we have a multicast component that sends that data two ways it sends it to an ADO.NET destination component and a record set destination component if we actually execute this thing we'll see exactly what data it, it builds okay so we've got four rows that um, provides the height of four guys called John, Paul, George and Ringo who you might have heard of. You play that through. Now what's happening in here is the record set destination has populated the in-memory data set with those four rows. What the data reader destination does is provide the data to any component that can talk to this ADO.NET destination and can consume the data. So essentially this destination component is sat here waiting for some sort of caller to come in and pull that data out. Now in this case that's not going to happen because um, we don't have any calling application, we just executed this task uh, in isolation. It did actually finish there, that's because it's got a timeout on it. But that's what the data reader destination does, it makes data available from the data flow task so that it, that it can be consumed from some sort of external process. This is all standard out of the box SSIS stuff. So I'll stop that. We'll go back to the control flow. Now we have two template tasks here. Well, the first one is a streaming text generation. And notice that we don't have any precedence constraints set up between our data flow task and this streaming text generation task. That's because they're going to run simultaneously and our streaming text generation is going to consume data from that data read the destination that we just saw. If we go into this we'll see exactly how it does that. I want to draw your attention to these, this section down at the bottom called parameters. You see that our reader source type has a number of options available to it. We have direct input, file connection, 
variable and destination. These are the different types of data that that the um, task can consume. Now in this case we got it set to destination. If we expand that reader destination, we have a connection defined and we have a connection manager called PKG. So I'm going to cancel out of this dialog and just show you the PKG connection manager because this is quite new as well. I'll double click on this guy and what we're looking at here is a custom Cozy Rock connection manager and what it actually does is provide the ability to point to a currently executing SSIS package and there are a number of Cozy Rock tasks and components that actually use that functionality and the template task happens to be one of them. Now in this case we've got a box checked that is labelled connection to current package. In other words what this connection manager does is provide a connection or a hook into the currently executing package and then that can be used in our streaming text generation task. So I'll go back into here. We've specified our PKG connection manager. And there it is. Now if we go into the dialog here, you'll notice that um, it makes available to us all the data flow tasks that are in this package. In this case, it's just this DFT prepare the data that we looked at earlier and it finds all the data reader destination components that are in there in this case there's only one that's called destination so that's selected for us and what it actually does with that data is then pass it into this template property here now this is where the Apache Velocity project comes in because what we have here is a set of script which actually produces which actually takes our input data and produces it um, a different output for us. Now in this case it's not going to do too much, it's simply going to convert it to a CSV file for us. I'm not going to go into any depth on the actual script language here, it's uh, very complicated stuff and if you really want to get into the template task and you think this is something useful that's something that you can take upon yourself to learn at a later date. But For, all you, all, for now all you need to know is that this um, task is going to take that input data and produce a CSV file from it. Now that CSV file will be stored in a location specified by a connection manager called csvtxt. And if we look down the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you can see that we have a csv.txt file connection manager down here, which just specifies a location that this file is going to be created at. Okay, so just to review what's going on, we have this template task which takes input from our data reader destination in a data flow. It carries out some transformation on it as specified by our template property using that script language and it's going to output um, into a file uh, specified by our csv.txt connection manager. Notice also that it's running at the same time as the data flow task, that's very important. Secondly, we have our record set HTML generation over here. Now this do, does run after the data flow task. We have a precedence constraint set between them. That's because, we're going to our data flow, our record set destination is going to populate an in-memory data set for us, which can then be consumed by our record set HTML generation template task. If we take a look in here, you see that in this case our RS source type is variable, whereas previously in the other example it was set to destination and we simply select the variable that is being populated um, with that data and if we go back into the data flow you'll see that our user record set variable uh, user record set variable that we looked at there is also the one that is being populated by our record set destination back in here so hopefully you can see exactly how we're going to consume the data. If we take a look at our template property again you'll see that in this case we're doing something slightly different to what we did before. Whereas before it produced a CSV file in this case it's actually going to produce some HTML for us. So we can take a look here and see uh, it's going to create a HTML table element for us which then later gets closed down here uh, we have some TR elements, which means table row, uh, and it's using some script code to actually produce the data that's going to go into our HTML table. As I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how the script language here actually works. For now, all you need to know is what it's actually going to do. I'll cancel out of that again. 
uh, one other thing to notice. Um, the file that is going to be cr created is specified by our rs.html um, connection manager. Okay, so I've taken you through what's actually going to happen. I suppose we should actually go and execute this thing. So here we go. Execute package. So our data flow task is running again, and we've got our John Paul George and Ringo data set. If we let that go, you'll see in this case our data reader destination went green immediately. Now that's because the data was getting consumed by our stream inject text generation task. So the whole package has worked successfully, hopefully. We'll stop that. I'm just going to go and look at the folder where we actually created those files. And here they have been created. We look at our csv.txt. Sure enough, John Paul, George and Ringo have been created in a CSV file. Now if we check our HTML file, Sure enough, we have John Paul, George and Ringo created inside an HTML table. So that's a tour of the Cozy Rock template task. I think it's uh, quite a useful task if you, re if you need to create HTML on a regular basis. Perhaps uh, you have a website that displays data and you, you have difficulty getting at that data. Well, here's a way that you can actually present it to that website. There's quite a lot of potential uses for this. I hope this has been useful and I hope you find a useful Cozy Rocks template task. Thank you very much.